Hey, I'm Steve with 45 North, and today we're going to be learning how to read a tread pattern. We'll look at the various features and what their benefits are for various riding conditions. There are four main aspects to a tread pattern. Once you understand these, you should be able to match up the correct tread with the various conditions you'll run into. First, we're going to talk about propulsion traction. This is a tire's ability to propel the rider forward. So let's see what that looks like on a tire. First off, your center tread is gonna be most responsible for propulsion traction. Those are the lugs sort of right here along the tread pattern. Um, what's gonna come in contact and actually scoop the snow is these forward facing sides of the lug. You'll notice a taller, more squared lug uh, will provide more traction than something rounded or ramped. Uh, additionally, you'll see little slits on some of these. We call that siping. That allows a lug to conform to terrain better and creates more traction while you're riding. All right, next on the list is braking traction. It may seem obvious, but this is just your tire's ability to grip when you're on the brakes. So let's see what that looks like. Again, you're gonna be engaging the center tread um, more than the side, although you will engage side traction when you're braking through corners, but we're just gonna focus on the center. Um, key features here are a tall squared off rear facing lug uh, additionally, you'll notice that all of these lugs, when combined, create a shovel or scoop design. Uh, that acts as a snow plow and builds up snow as you're braking, giving you the most grip possible. And third, we're going to talk about cornering traction. This is your tire's ability to grip when you're rolling through a turn. Let's take a look at the lugs that affect cornering traction. Those are going to be the side lugs, these ones right here. Uh, they tend to be larger and more aggressive than the lugs down the center of the tread pattern. That's because you can have larger lugs on the side, they don't engage the ground too often, so they don't really affect uh, straight line performance as much. Additionally, because they are much larger, you'll notice this shape right here, we call that bracing. Uh, that's built into these so that uh, the lug being taller doesn't buckle under strong cornering forces. It provides more structure. Uh, you'll also notice with this lug, there's a little hole in it. That's actually a stud pocket. Um, this is the Rathchild. Many of our tires are stud compatible, so you would just install your studs in those. You'll also notice that they aren't specific to cornering lugs. Uh, you can find them on center lugs as well. And last but not least is rolling efficiency. So rolling efficiency is essentially your tire's ability to keep its momentum. We're gonna be going back to talking about the center tread here, and we're gonna focus on three key features that increase rolling efficiency. So those three features are how tightly spaced the lug pattern is, uh, the size of the lugs, as well as ramping on the forward facing edge of the lug. Uh, generally speaking, tightly spaced and smaller lugs with this ramping uh, will increase rolling efficiency when compared to larger, more aggressive lugs that are more spread out across the tread pattern and have a steeper, sharper forward facing edge to the lug. So now that we've gone over the various aspects of tread design, let's apply them to some common riding conditions. Generally speaking, if you are in deep, loose snow, uh, a larger lug with more spacing is going to be more beneficial. Those larger lugs are going to give you more cornering, propulsion and braking traction and that spread apart design is gonna help shed snow while you're going through that deep stuff. In firmer conditions like groomed trails where you don't need large lugs to cut through soft snow for traction and you don't need spacing for shedding, a small ramped lug will provide you with more rolling efficiency and still give you a good amount of traction on that firm snow. Float is another key factor. Uh, that's affected by the size of the tire casing as well as the tire pressure you're running. A larger casing with lower pressure is going to create a larger footprint, which allows you to float uh, on top of looser snow. This video has really only scratched the surface of tread design, and 45 North puts in a ton of time in research and development for every one of our tire models. To find the right model for you, visit 45north.com.